All right, so moving on to the final segment, we're going to switch gears from NBA sports analysts, and we're going to switch gears to the NFL. Uh, I'll be sharing my top landing spots for DeAndre, wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and Minnesota, right, Minnesota running back uh, Dalvin Cook. So I'll start with Dalvin, uh, I'll start with DeAndre Hopkins first. Uh, but the landing spots for DeAndre Hopkins, for me, these are some great landing spots. Uh, after the Arizona Cardinals released DeAndre Hopkins a few weeks ago, uh, after failing to find a trade partner for DeAndre Hopkins, uh, make no mistake about it, DeAndre Hopkins is no scrub. He could still be a elite wide receiver at this particular stage of his NFL career and definitely by any means is still a true number one wide receiver in the National Football League. So DeAndre Hopkins would be a gift to anybody out there in the NFL right now. But these are my top three landing spots for DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, number one is the Kansas City Chiefs. I do believe it would be a dream scenario to be a part of the same offense as Andy Reid being the play caller. Patrick Mahomes being your quarterback and having Travis Kelsey as the tight end and having DeAndre Hopkins as your true number one wide receiver. That is a dream scenario offense for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs could honestly use a big body uh, wide receiver, a big physical wide receiver to take the attention away from tra tight end Travis Kelsey. Uh, they lost Juju Smith uh, during free agency. He was a big part of the Kansas City Chiefs offense last NFL season. They lost him at free agency to the New Orleans, uh, to the New England Patriots. Uh, but right now, I'm looking at this depth chart for the Kansas City Chiefs. They do have some speed. They do have some athleticism at the wide receiver position. They do have Kadarius Toney and Sky Moore as their best wide receivers right now. But if you could add DeAndre Hopkins to the mix, and those younger players can learn from DeAndre Hopkins, and you could have Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, DeAndre Hopkins, Isaiah Pacheco at uh, running back. Uh, you could have Kadarius Toney and Sky Moore also on the offense. This would be a high-scoring offense, just like the Kansas City Chiefs will always be when they have Patrick Mahomes, uh, Travis Kelsey, and Andy Reid all a part of the same offense. So to me, this would be a dream scenario for DeAndre Hopkins to go. He would be playing for a true contender, playing for the reigning defending Super Bowl champions in the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, team number two is the Cleveland Browns. Uh, this would be a great story to have DeAndre Hopkins and Deshaun Watson play together again. If you guys know, they had a lot of success offensively together in their days with the Houston Texans. I would love to see this duo team up with each other in the AFC once again. Uh, but the offense, if the Browns could add DeAndre Hopkins to, uh, to the roster, uh, the offense to me will put up a lot of points in what is going to be a competitive AFC conference. Uh, but this offense, if they could add DeAndre Hopkins, would truly, in my eyes, would be elite. They would have DeAndre. Uh, they would have Deshaun Watson at quarterback. They would have Nick Chubb at running back. They would have DeAndre Hopkins on one side at wide receiver. You would have Amari Cooper on the other side at wide receiver. You would have Elijah Moore, wide receiver they just traded from during the NFL free, uh, all free agency for the New York Jets. You would have Elijah Moore in the slot. You have David Njoku at tight end. This would be a high-scoring offense that the Cleveland Browns could have if they could pull in DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, but I would love to see it, man. That's I do believe that's a realistic uh, uh, landing spot for DeAndre Hopkins at this point of his career. And team number three is the New York Giants. We saw how fast Brian Dable turned the culture around for the New York Giants uh, in his first season, making the playoffs in the first, uh, and making it all the way to the second round. They knocked off the Minnesota Vikings as the sixth seed in the NFC. And uh, no shame of being eliminated by the reigning NFC champions and the Philadelphia Eagles. They were, uh, they were uh, dominated by them in the second round and later on eliminated. But Brian Day will definitely change around the culture in his first round, in his first year with the Giants. Nobody saw that coming. Uh, but if you guys pay attention to that whole entire run last year that the Giants went on, something that they did not have when they were winning in New York last year was a true number one wide receiver. Uh, having DeAndre Hopkins and the Giants offense would make the Giants a huge threat. And what and a J what I do believe is the JV of football, the NFC conference. There's not really a lot of teams that are going to be a threat, and the NFC is wide open to anybody that could be find themselves as a contender this year. So the Giants will be a true offensive threat uh, if they could get DeAndre Hopkins in their offense. So uh, we saw that Brian Dable fixed Daniel Jones. 
He was no longer a turnover machine last year with the interceptions. He was no longer a turnover machine with the fumbles. So Brian Dable, to me right now, and what it looks like, he's fixed Daniel Jones. So an offense with Daniel Jones, and an offense with Saquon Barkley, a running back, uh, with Isaiah Hodgins, who had his coming out party last year. I do believe that he's going to be uh, a cornerstone in the offense this year. Uh, Jalen Hyatt. Uh, Hyatt, uh, wide receiver from Tennessee, rookie tight end, uh, rookie wide receiver, uh, and then you have Darren Waller, tight end that they just acquired from the Las and uh, Las Vegas Raiders via trade during the NFL offseason. Uh, I do, and you add DeAndre Hopkins to the mix. I do believe that the offense could be the Giants' offense could be must see. And this would bring a lot of attention to the Big Apple in New York if they could bring in DeAndre Hopkins. So those are all my top landing spots for DeAndre Hopkins as he, if he, as he tries to find a new NFL team. But uh, my top landing spots for Dalvin Cook, uh, let's call it what it is. Yes, he's still a part of the Minnesota Vikings. He's still the star running back for the Minnesota Vikings. But it's only a matter of time before the Minnesota Vikings move on and move off of Dalvin Cook. Uh, I do believe they're going to either trade him if they can't find a trade partner, I do believe that the Vikings will go ahead and release Dalvin Cook. Uh, Kevin O'Connell uh, was under the learning tree of Sean McVay uh, from his days as the offensive coordinator for the Rams. Got his first stint with the Vikings as head coach last year. We saw that offense with Kirk Cousins and company. That was a more pass-first offense more than anything. They like to pass the ball more than they run the ball, and they're not really balanced. They like to go with the air attack more than anything else. So to me... I think that's one of the reasons why Dalvin Cook is on his way out of Minnesota. Uh, the team likes what they saw over the years from uh, backup running back Alexander Madison, who is only a matter of time before he's the starting running back for the Minnesota Vikings, and they could get him, they could have him as the starting running back at a cheaper price than what they're paying Dalvin Cook. And if Dalvin Cook is not a part of the Minnesota Vikings roster uh, next NFL season, it would save the Vikings eleven million dollars in cap space. So. And now we're in a league where running backs, you're not going to pay running backs top dollars unless you're King Henry, Derrick Henry. Uh, running backs are being formed and created via late round picks. They're not really worth the money. Running backs really don't last long in the NFL nowadays. So uh, I, to me, you can truly avoid paying running backs a big salary and now in today's NFL world right now. So... I think that's going to be the reason why the Vikings move off him. But uh, landing spot number one for Dalvin Cook, once he's either trade or release, is the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the Dolphins already have their star uh, star players offensively that are track stars and Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Uh, their offense has top offensive playmakers. But the offense truly lacks a true running back. Yes, they had a running back committee going on last year. But why would you have a running back committee when you have the chance to add a running back like Dalvin Cook, a top 10 running back in this National Football League, and an explosive running back when healthy. Uh, Dalvin Cook would be a good fit for uh, the Dolphins running the ball, would take the pressure off of Tua Tungvaloa, who is uh, going to be fighting for his life to stay uh, out of concussion protocol this year. I say that with all due respect, but they, that would take a lot of pressure off of Tua Tungvaloa uh, passing the ball, if he could give, if he could turn around and hand the ball off to a running back like Dalvin Cook in the backfield, it would make the Dolphins' offense more dangerous. Uh, a guy like uh, Mike McDaniel's uh, would be very smart calling plays for the uh, Miami Dolphins. So I do believe this would be a good fit. Uh, team number two would be the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I do believe that Dalvin Cook would be a great addition to the Buffalo Bills offense that have lacked a solid running game over the last few years in Buffalo. Uh, yes, as great as Josh Allen is as a quarterback, he's a great, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, a top five quarterback. Yes, hands down, yes. But you cannot have Josh Allen as your leading rushing scorer. He's not a Lamar Jackson. He's not a guy that he can make plays with his legs. Yes, absolutely. Is he a dual threat guy? Yes. But that is not someone that you want the the guy, your franchise guy, running the ball and being as dangerous as he is with the football, running like he's a running back. That's not going to last long, longevity for Josh Allen. And he should not be the lead, team's leading rusher last year. Uh, and he had 762 rushing yards. That cannot happen. He was the, the over all the running backs that the uh, the Buffalo Bills had last season. Your franchise quarterback, if your name is not Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, or Justin Fields, 
you should not be leading your team in rushing yards. And Josh Allen has done that for the Buffalo Bills uh, last season. I do believe it would be great for Dalvin Cook to be a part of this uh, Buffalo Bills offense. Uh, take the pressure <coughs> off of Josh Allen. Make the team more dynamic offensively. Um, but it would also be cool because they could have his brother. Uh, he could be teaming up in the backfield with his brother, James Cook. That was a second-round draft pick from Georgia uh, just a season ago. So this would be great to me if Dalvin Cook could land in Buffalo. And team number three would be the Chicago Bears. Uh, the Bears have a lot of cap space to play with right now. Uh, they could go after a guy like Dalvin Cook. And that would bring more fuel to the fire uh, to add him to a divisional rival where he could play the Minnesota Vikings twice a year. Uh, their running back depth uh, lacks star power right now. Um, I'm looking at these young players and they're not living up to, I don't believe they will live up to what David Montgomery once was for the uh, Chicago Bears. They lost him during free agency when he signed with a divisional rival in the Detroit Lions. So I do believe that the Bears could really uh, have, would love to have a star running back like Dalvin Cook. Uh, he would be a great fit to the offense and would take the pressure off of Justin Fields, uh, who could be in store for a breakout season. Why not take the weight off his shoulders as well? Uh, that was, these, are the, these are some great fits that I do believe that Dalvin Cook could be a part of. But those are my landings, top landing spots for wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and uh, running back Dalvin Cook. But that, that is going to be it for us. That is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.